I'd like to thank you for inviting me on the show. It's such an honour to be here and I'd just like to say that when I'm not playing Xbox with my mate Thor, I really like to listen to my favourite podcast, Pop Culture Pasta. Hey Dave, I'm thinking about doing another revolution. Do you want to join up? I might need some help with organising the pamphlets though. Pop Culture Pasta Okay Cody, stop what you're doing because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you're used to. I look funny, but yo, I'm making money. See? Are you, it, are, you, it, are you not? See, Cody likes to say this thing where he says, I live the 80s. I lived it. <laughs> I loved it. I'm over here wording everything you're saying. <laughs> and I was ready for you to also say, this is a new AI rap. Come on, Cody. Here's your chance. Do your dance. <laughs> no, thank you. The Humpty Dance. Yeah. Anyway, all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, the what hump? is the uh, the the movie? What movie? Is it Nothing But Trouble? Wait, wait, refresh my memory. What's Nothing But Trouble? Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase. Well, it's the same group. Oh my gosh. The same okay, group. That's yes. way back. That's way back. Because I'm a child of the '80s, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, of course. Um, John yeah. Candy's in it, and they sing that song, yeah. Or man, rap it. It's, it's been like, so long since I've seen that. You're welcome. But that wasn't the song that was in it. It was the, that that you have, you have the right group. Uh, it was Digital I, Underground. Digital I think that they did a bit of it, but that wasn't the main song because they were promoting a different song. Oh, yeah. yeah. That song never took off. The Digital Underground never did anything that was even half as big as the Humpty Dance. Yeah. And, and the dude wore, yeah. he wore the glasses with the nose. and The, <laughs> the gimmick was you know, unbelievable. I was hoping you weren't going to go into the rest of the words of that no, song. No, no. This, <laughs> is, this a, is a family show. It's a family program. Although, you know, compared to, like, you know, once we got in the 90s and gangster rap, it all seemed kind of tame by then. But let's, you know, not go there. Uh, welcome. This is Pop Culture Pastor. I'm Dave. Cody's here. I am. And uh, you may have heard some other voices. We've got Matt and Shannon Bogle, husband and wife. Matt, a geek of the round table. And Shannon, her first time on. As I'm a just guest. here to enjoy. Yes. Yeah. So she's like, I, I hear we have some expertise coming from Shannon later on once we get to something later on in the show. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> so y'all can just try and guess. Uh, what we're talking about. Although, if you read the description for the pod before you started listening, you already know. And you, thank you for actually reading it. Yeah. I work hard on those descriptions. I was going to take credit for it, but that would have been a lie. That so would have been. We don't do that. I mean, we don't. Because we're pastors. It's frowned upon. It is. <laughs> it's frowned upon. What about... This is the, the, the hard question. Inevitably, if you're a pastor, someone always comes up and be like, what about little white lies? What about if your wife says, you know, does my, you know, backside look big in this? What do you say? I'm like, well, I don't want to get punched. So, you know. <laughs> um, so that's not wrong. I'm like, well, you know, like if you're boiling down the Bible to a list of things you do and don't do, you're kind of missing the point. Yep. Um, I'm good with you boiling down to a list of two things you do. Uh huh. Yeah. And then calling it good. What are those things, Cody? Uh, love God and love people. Oh, the whole law and the prophets—they all rest upon that. So I've heard that somewhere. Yeah, that's I love that. I love God and I love people. That's so much fun. It is lucky for us. Very much so. Yeah, I love most people. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Matt is not a pastor though, so you know he can get away with that. He can get away with that. Matt will work on that. Yeah, I work in healthcare. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if there was something hidden in that statement or not. So we're just going to move on. And uh, yeah. Okay. So we're here. Uh, we got a lot of pop culture news to get to. And then we've got something really exciting uh, for the, the month of March. And if it's, you know, it's March, it's March Madness. And so you may remember that we did a thing last year with the tournament, our own little tournament. So, or was that two years ago? It was two years ago. I pushed to do something last year. It didn't happen. Time flies. But we've, we've got something for us all to argue about on the internet for the month of March and vote on. Trust. And we'll get to that later on. Uh, let's get to the news. I, as 
there were a couple breaking things, Cody, like things that happened just before we came to air. I have not been on the phone that much, so I might have missed it. Cody, Cody's a working man. Yeah. And he's wearing, is that a Missouri shirt you're wearing? An no. AU shirt? No, that but would be gross. Why? There's a tiger on it. That is a Fort Hayes State tiger. I can't tell the difference. There's a big difference. And how dare you? All right. Uh, if you're not from Kansas or Missouri, then you wonder why we have so much disdain. Well, it's a Civil War thing. Just look up bleeding Kansas, and you'll understand why we... We, uh, Kansas don't like Missourians very much. Something about Quantrill as well. Quantrill's raid, yeah. This is all the stuff. The, uh, Kansas students really, when you're a kid in Kansas, you get like a much more in depth Civil War uh, story. You do. That starts here in in Kansas and Missouri, which is kind of kind of cool. But a story for another time. How about this? Um, Rust, the movie Rust. Very familiar with this movie. Okay, the Alec Baldwin movie that someone, uh, the accidental shooting death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins, we talked about a lot when it went down. Um, Rust Armorer. So each movie with guns has an armorer, apparently. That's what we've learned. Which is a fancy title. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those, you know, 8,000 names they put in the credits. And in this case, it was kind of an important name. She, uh, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, just today has been found guilty of involuntary manslaughter over the accidental shooting death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Split verdict, 12 member jury. Uh, they declined on Wednesday to convict her on evidence of tampering charges with, uh, you know, tampering on the evidence. Mm. So apparently there was maybe they were trying to cover it up, but they couldn't prove that. She faces up to, she's 26 years old. And she faces up to three years in prison for her role in the death of Hutchins. She was remanded into custody after the verdict was read. And I I guess that's that's where she's going. So that's just all this seems so tragic over something. So like, how does this even happen? Yeah, I mean, we did a whole pod, I think, over this or a huge segment of a pod over this. But uh, Guns with ammo probably should not be on a Hollywood set. No. The whole point is it's pretend, right? I don't... Yeah. Act like you have a gun, a pistol from the 1800s. You don't need a real one. Yeah. Um, And, like, I have so many questions still around this because, like, yes, this person was in charge of that portion, but there's people overseeing the whole movie set and the hirings and firings and like what happens with those hombres? Not, not to get super political, but does this like say something about our culture at large or is this just isolated? Do you think this is just a, a bad mistake or, um, it's not an unheard of mistake. And, but does it say something about our culture and our love of guns? Like, that this was even a thing that could happen. Mm, I think it's just weird circumstance. I guess what I'm saying is, do you think pop culture in particular has um, to answer for any of our gun culture problems or, or no? Like uh, we, I think we t- we got in this little bit t- talking about John wick one time. Yeah. But that but, was more revenge culture. Now I'm talking about like gun culture. Um, I, there's so much, so many guns before Hollywood's even a thing Yeah, that I don't think that, I think that movies definitely have made it cool looking. And so it might have held on a little bit or people are like, I need something that looks like an assault rifle. Um, so I can look like John Rambo, but otherwise no guns have been a part of the American way forever. Yeah. Well, in guns in general, um, the guy that came from the military and I worked in law enforcement for years, yeah. um, they equalize. And so people feel, you know, a, a woman is just as strong as a man when they have a gun. A, a, you know, you put a woman on the battlefield and she has a gun, she's just as efficient as a guy. Or, or if not better, my wife would tell you, women shoot better than uh-huh. men. Okay. Um, That's that, is that science? Does that that science? Um, science between us. I proved it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> she's 
got to rub it in. Yeah. So, uh, but, yeah. But so, Matt was a cop. Right. Still am, part-time. Yeah. Oh, you are? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, still work part-time for the Neosho County Sheriff's Department. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Learning things on the pod. You're never going to get me, copper. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to find me. <laughs> Right. That's exactly right. That's, that was a very. <laughs> How many uh, times a day does someone say that to you? Uh, d- never. You're be sleeping that, with the fishes. See, I have never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> never. All right. That's sad to my eight-year-old self. But you know, uh, I agree. Gun safety is um, is in, and uh, is huge and important. And um, again, I'm not trying to get political. Okay. This, but but when you you guys were talking about guns, they uh, they did they changed. The, they changed the world. Oh, yeah. Um, and and I don't know if it's a good or a bad way. I don't mean it, uh, they changed the world. Yeah. And there's a fascination with them. I mean, especially in the U.S., I agree. Yeah. Well, we often, um, we often like to have these deeper discussions about pop culture. And the reason I, I find that interesting is because pop culture is still uh, wildly changing and quickly. You know, like what the, the, the medium of television is barely a hundred years old, right? yeah. roughly moving pictures. And so this is all still wild and new and kind of uh, the idea of movies and TV uh, influencing our culture. I'm just interested in that sort of stuff. Do you want to hear something? I would love to hear something. I'm glad. So um, <laughs> have you heard of Jared Diamond? No, but that's that's not a real name. It is a real name. That's like a pro wrestler. That's, that's like a wrestler's name. Jared <laughs> Should be. Um, but no, uh, he wrote a book because he studied human history called Guns, Germs, and Steel, The Fates of Human Societies, A Short History of Everybody for the Last 13,000 Years. Oh. And what his conclusion was, there were three things that led to especially uh, the European colonization of essentially the world, and that is guns, germs, and steel. Mm-hmm. Those three things changed the whole course of humanity in a very short time. And so America especially has had a fond fascination with guns, and they have been portrayed throughout our cowboy movies, throughout our military movies, throughout our revenge movies. Yeah. But I think that's because our culture as Americans influenced pop culture, not the other way around. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that sounds fascinating. That book sounds like something I need to read. I was thinking, yeah, that's that, that's he, yeah, that, because that would be good. I think um, as and in, in I studied, I majored in history in college. Um, I think most people are when you don't have a deep understanding of of history, you don't how you don't understand how big of a part the second one plays the germs yep uh because everyone especially in this day and age where we like to argue about things we talk about you know the europeans coming to the new world and the oppressiveness of all that and how many uh native people in the americas died but i mean it's something crazy big like 90 percent die of disease and that's no less tragic it just but it maybe changes the nature of the discussion a little bit instead of like well you know people just started murdering you know which Humans do, so it's not like we're completely wrong, but I don't know. Historical discussions in, in particular, I like it to be accurate, and yes. so rarely it is, is it accurate, especially when you're online and, you know, Twitter, never a good place to have a good, accurate discussion. Yeah, that was one of the often referenced sources in one of my sociology classes back in the day. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. All right, so yeah, that uh, this young lady is going to prison for maybe three years, although she won't get that long, right? Um, I don't know. We're in an interesting time with guns, deaths, and accidents. I mean, you're 26 year olds, 24 years old when this happened, and you're working on a major movie, and now, like, now she's in this. It's sort of a that's kind of crazy to think, I think about. It depends how good of an attorney she has. Um, yeah. I agree with Cody that they, um, if she doesn't have a good attorney, I think they'll throw the book at her. Yeah. Yeah. So. Just to make a, make an example. Yeah. Okay. Well, I like to, I wanted to get that issue out of the way first because now we can get into some more, you know, poppy kind of culture. Woohoo. <clears throat> um, actually, I was going to go to this, but maybe we should talk about, 
maybe we should talk about this first because um, this also happened today. So Joe Rogan. Joseph had, Rogan. Yeah. He had Zach Snyder. Oh, hey, I know Zach. On his show. It came out today, and I'm watching a piece of this. Um, This is great. You're going to – this is like – I wish Scotty were here because this <laughs> – I couldn't believe it when I saw it. So I'm watching this clip of the uh, the Joe Rogan show that came out literally the day we're recording here. And he's got Zack Snyder on. And I'm thinking already, I'm like, oh, Zack Snyder. Well, that's interesting. Joe Rogan getting like really someone like pop culture-y. Very much so. And he starts talking about like canon, which if you listen to the pod, we talk about canon and these IPs, these intellectual properties, and the handling of it a lot. And Zack Snyder is a guy, like him or love, love him or hate him, uh, it's, he's smack in the center of this, this discussion. Oh, yeah. Because of the, his, some of his choices he made with the DC comic characters. I mean, if you watched his first DC film, uh, The Watchmen, he made some choices that would have upset those that are very much traditionalists that want the canon to remain a certain way. Yeah. So he starts talking about, he starts talking about Batman. Sweet. <laughs> I, I about fell out of my chair, Cody. He says, people are always like Batman can't kill and that Batman can't kill. Doesn't kill people is canon. He explained. And then he goes on to say, the first thing I do when you say that is I want to see what happens when he does. Full stop. I had to stop the video because I was laughing so hard. I'm just like, you yeah, we just nailed why this is a problem. The whole problem with maybe why Marvel's struggling now is because they kind of went the Zack Snyder route where they're taking creative liberties to it. And the whole reason the Infinity Saga is good is because it's super devoted to the canon, to the IP, the original story. And here's Zack Snyder talking about Batman and the canon. And by the way, he also did a movie called Man of Steel where Superman kills the villain at the end of it. At the first stinking movie. So, so far I don't have any issue with what Oh, he says. gosh. <laughs> of course you don't. Well, if you're a Batman fan, you don't. Because it's all about psychology. Even with the rogues, it's about oh, psychology. Yeah. And so what happens if Batman doesn't have that rule or something causes him to break to not have that rule anymore. I'm intrigued. So if you're not like a hardcore DC person, get off Zack Snyder's fan page. Okay, but here's the problem. The problem is, is what I think what we can prove now is that if you're going to take creative liberties, that might be good for the neutral observer, but the neutral observer isn't where two thirds of the money comes from. That's when your movie makes a when a comic book movie makes a billion dollars, it's because sweaty comic book nerds saw it five times. Neutral observer, who you're trying like Zack Snyder's apparently going for here, they're gonna go see it once and they're gonna watch it once on stream and they'll be like, oh, that was good. But they're not living, eating, breathing it. So like Tom sweaty Holland's comic book nerds. Last Spider Man movie was super canon. Tom Holland's last Spider Man movie? Yeah. Was it? What what about it wasn't? I'm asking you, a MC guy, was it super canon? Because if you tell me there was a lot of liberties taken, I'm going to tell you it made a billion dollars. It just depends if you have a good script, I really think. I would say that it's, it's, it's faithful to the IP of Spider-Man. Uh, the story itself does not come from a particular story in canon. Okay. But it's multiverse, which lends it to just being able to play with it. Well, which, which is fine. Like, okay, if Zack Snyder was going to make a Superman movie, like Man of Steel, for instance, and he wanted to play around with it and take some liberties with it, then make it a multiverse movie, which isn't a good idea for the first movie. I get it, which is maybe why you don't want to play around with it too much. Although the Snyder cut of the Justice League hints that we are into some multiversal things. Yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, that's, that's a cut that, you know. Like, is, is that actually out there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the oh, four and a half hour one. It's all over, Max. Yeah. <laughs> it's all over it. Yeah, I watched it. That's four and a half hours. I'm not getting back. <laughs> uh, okay. So what else did Zach say in this Joseph Rogan interview? Oh, um, he's he's talking about, he. if I made a romantic, he says, quote, if I made a romantic comedy, you'd be like, okay, that was fun. 
the people who love, and by the way, uh, I love that they feel this passionately. In no way would I criticize that because I live the same life. Because for me, it's morning, noon, and night. But for those guys, it's not just a movie. And so you have to, on some level, acknowledge that this is their religion, and they feel strongly about it. And the truth is, it's my religion, too. It's like, okay, well, how do you say something like that? Like, making movies is his his religion. Okay. It's interesting that he would... It's interesting he would say that because he starts talking about the grievances people have had with some of his takes. And he says, I tend to get in trouble because I do a deconstructionist view, which that has, that has, uh, that carries some weight in some, some faith discussions. Oh yeah. That one's a hot button topic. I do take a deconstructionist view because of the dark Knight returns because of Watchmen. If you've read those two comics, it's hard to go back. And it's because I care that I want to take them apart, but here's the problem. Like if Alan Moore does a deconstructionist view of comic book stories where he's subverting tropes and it's called the Watchmen, then why as Zack Snyder would you deconstruct a deconstruction? Like that doesn't make any sense. You got to carry it to its logical end. That's just, well, then you're an Ouroboros. Then you're just eating your own tail. Pretty much. I don't know. I I thought the goal was to make money. Was, Was I wrong? No, it's about making art, Dave. How <laughs> dare you? Well, there's a lot of bad art out there. You know, hey, no, all mad props to, to Zack Snyder. I mean, that dude's... He's made a killing. Yeah, he's not hurting. <laughs> he's not hurting for money, and people like some... There's a lot of people out there that like his art. Um, and I do like... I love 300. I love the first two-thirds of Man of Steel. I think the first two-thirds of Man of Steel is the best Superman movie ever made. I'll agree. I, I want, I'll agree with that. I want the Dave Rimbold cut of it, though. Just leave that last 45 minutes off. <laughs> I don't want to see it. I'll just imagine how it went. And forget Pa Kent getting sucked up in yeah, the tornado. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. Also take out everything Pa Kent in that movie. Poor Kevin Costner. It's not Kevin Costner slander. It wasn't his fault. But Pa Kent, they, they messed up Pa Kent. Pa Kent will always be... The dude in the first Superman, Christopher Reeve Superman. I like Pa Kent when he's on the mountain just randomly after he's dead. <laughs> well, I thought John Schneider was the Pa Kent. John Schneider was a great Pa <laughs> Kent, too. Nobody, nobody spouted a platitude like John Schneider, Pa Kent. <laughs> he's just one of those good old boys. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, yeah. Plus, he's Bo Duke. So, you know, uh, he's got a lot of, a lot of uh, pedigree there. Okay, well, we can uh, go on to the next news item. Dakota Johnson is still doing interviews. Madam Web. Her <laughs> web connects us all. <laughs> Has anyone at this table seen Madam Web yet? No. No. I really want to. I know, so do I. I want someone to pay for my ticket. <laughs> That's I really, it. <laughs> what I really want to do is like wait for it to come out on streaming, and we yes. could do like a live YouTube of us just watching it together and like skewering it. That would be uh, I also feel bad at times. Why? Because like these thespians were were bamboozled and hoodwinked into this. Yeah. Well, so they say those stories where they all thought they were like in an MCU movie. Like that's kind of crazy. That seems to implicate that Sony was definitely trying to lie to them. Like, oh yeah, this is an MCU movie. This this will be in the MCU. It's a Spider-Man movie without Spider-Man. I mean, right. Well, technically, Disney Plus does have that deal with the Sony properties now that they're streaming on Disney. And so it might accidentally end up on <laughs> Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in a new Bustle interview, which that's made up. Is Bustle a real thing? I'm choosing to believe it's the highest form of journalism. <laughs> Everyone knows that's that's, bustling to me. That's Gizmodo. Uh, (laughs) The actress said, uh, Dakota Johnson said, working on the superhero flick was, quote, definitely an experience, though not one she's looking to do again. She said, I'd never done anything like it before, and I'll probably never do anything like it again because I don't make sense in that world. And I know that now. But sometimes in the industry, you sign on to something, and it's one thing, and then as you're making it, it becomes a completely different thing, and you're like, wait, what? (laughs) Her comments on this Uh, press tour have been pure gold. She's been the best. I was really kind of neutral in Dakota Johnson land before all this. Now I'm pro-Dakota. 
I am so pro Dakota because she's handled this press, this whole press tour for this movie brilliantly. Um, yeah, she she's great. Yeah, she's a good survivor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she said part of the problem with you know what's gone on with Madam Web is Hollywood is not trusting filmmakers to execute their vision. She says it's so hard to get movies made, and in these big movies that get made, it's even starting to happen with the little ones, which is really what's freaking me out. Decisions are being made by committees, and art doesn't do well when it's made by committee. She, that's a good point. Just ask my friend Zack Snyder. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's making art. There's no, well, there's no denying he that. He will tell you that like Warner Brothers like crippled the... Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman. And then uh, the guy that made the first Suicide Squad movie, he had the same experience. Yeah. So, Team Dakota and Zach. I mean, I'm Team Dakota. <laughs> I don't, like, I have a lot of respect for Zach. But that, uh, him saying that today, like, I, on some level, okay, how about this? If you're, if you're doing something that's an existing IP, my my only ask is that you get someone who has an affinity for it, who loves it. Because if you have an affinity and love for it, you're going to want to tell a story inside that universe. And Zach is is more visionary. He's a more visionary kind of guy where he, he doesn't necessarily want to tell a story in that universe. He wants to play around with the characters in the sandbox, but then like you know change the nature of the sandbox, right? Of the reality of it. And I'm I'm just not sure that works. I think. It can work. I think Rings of Power is a good example of it can work, although maybe that's debatable because a lot of people hate Rings of Power. I kind of liked it, and I really did love the source material. I love Lord of the Rings, that that universe, but I wasn't real versed on like the, his Tolkien's notes from the Silmarillion. I mean, who amongst us hasn't read that? Like three <laughs> times over. I'm assuming that was a joke. You, you haven't really read the Silmarillion? No. No. Okay. I have a life, Dave. Whoa. <laughs> Shocking Tolkien slander. It is. I mean, some people just got really mad. They should, but Tolkien would tell you, please don't worship my works. Oh, uh, you know, he probably would. He probably would. Matt, have you ever read the Silmarillion? No. Did nope. you watch Rings of Power? Yes, I liked it. You liked it? I okay. did like it. Yeah. All right. So we're in agreement there. Shannon, did you watch Rings of Power with Matt? No. <laughs> <laughs> I usually sleep through most movies. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. That's that's not bad either. I like a good nap. Um, we got to do, do a whole episode on the movies we fell asleep in. Oh, <laughs> that is numerous. <laughs> um. It's not a Batman movie for so, you, though. It's not a Batman movie. <laughs> so springboarding off of Madam Web, Chris Evans did an interview. Uh, he was at Emerald City Con. That's in Seattle. Big, that is. Big convention in Seattle. And he was talking about comic book movies. And he said this, comic book movies in general, for whatever reason, don't always get the credit I think they deserve. They're these big, giant movies. There's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. But the empirical evidence is in, and I think he's kind of referring to the recent ones. They're not easy to make. If it was easier, there there would be a lot more good ones. Oh, burn. Yeah. Uh, he quickly yeah. says, I'm not throwing shade. I've been a part of a few that missed. It happens. I'm looking at you, Fantastic Four. I'm not throwing shade. That's sort of like, uh, uh, um, don't take offense to this, but. <laughs> but. But like, okay, so I'm happy that when the, these people that have been a part of these good ones. They stand up for it a little bit. So you think of like the Scorsese's and the people who's like, this isn't art. This is not cinema. And they bag on it. And and clearly we're finding out like, no, there's there's definitely an art to it because we're making a lot of bad ones now. And so I, I, I appreciate that Chris Evans stands up and says, hey, well, clearly it's not easy to do. Otherwise, they just keep churning them out, right? Right. Um, well, his best one might be Scott Pilgrim versus the world. And I'm not lying. Scott Pilgrim's great. Love it. It's a great movie. Uh, all right. When you, you go back before comic book movies were big and great, there was a lot of comic book movies th that were really bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we got spoiled quickly, didn't we? Right. Because I think, you know, when, hey, when those first Fantastic Four movies came out, 
I mean, they were lame, but I loved them anyways because we didn't have like listen. I, I loved it. I loved the the trial of the Incredible Hulk, the made for TV movie that came out in the late eighties with Lou Ferrigno, or okay. mid, mid to late eighties, and it had like fake Daredevil and you know adventures in babysitting Thor. Like it was it was in, it was incredibly bad, but it was there was nothing like it. It was like for 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 lovers of those stories, it was like a dream come true. But we we're around the same age, Dave, and and, and I grew up with comic books, and that was my um, you know I could get lost in them, and I even liked the the original Spider Man that was horrible, the original Captain America that was horrible. Oh, you, you're talking about way back, right? Like late seventies, right? Yeah. Yeah, those were that Captain was, America where he's riding around on the motorcycle. Right. That's all I did. It was it wasn't even Captain America. It was like like there's Captain America. That was it. That's, yes. Well, Lou Ferrigno, the Hulk television series was like the first real thing. And because it tapped into something that, you know, that Marvel, like the MCU tried to for a brief second, and then they quickly made him like, you know, smart. Your Hulk that wears a cardigan. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, how dare you slander Adam West? What about Adam West? Um, the first real thing? Hello, Batman. That's not real. That was real. No, it wasn't. It was Holy camp- Rust it was campy. Nails. It, was, it was campy. It was meant for comedy. That Pow! wasn't. And, and granted, there's someone out there who's yelling at the. That is spot on. They're yelling at the speakers right now. And they're saying, Dave, that's how the comic was in the 50s. And I'm like, okay, that's fair. But I'm talking about like really doing uh, superhero stuff as like re- re- reality type entertainment. Well, I think the two of you are, you're talking Marvel and what, what it was based on of how Stan Lee wanted it. And you're talking DC of what, that what started. What made them great? Oh yeah, and so I, it's two different camps. I think you're. Yeah, the DC comics in like the in the fifties and sixties are are really kind of campy and goofy. So much fun. Yeah, they, sure. I won't. I had some. I'm yeah. all about fun, Dave. Yeah, I'm DC, a fun guy. That's why the DC villains, the Rogues Gallery for the the those heroes are kind of silly and fun. Indeed. But that's also why, like, when you decide to make the Joker a psycho, yeah, that's fun too. Um, and I don't remember who it was this week, but someone this week talked about like with Batman's canon, it's been around so long that almost everything is now canon. Yeah, I did see that yeah. quote this week, and I'm like, that's very valid because we have reimagined Batman, we've reimagined Thomas Wayne, Martha Wayne, we've reimagined all the rogues. Yeah, like, that's true. We've revisited it like 10 times over now. Yeah. So the only thing that's not canon and never will be, will be uh, the, the Tim Burton stuff. Get that stuff out. of here. <laughs> <laughs> Get that stuff out of here. We recently, by the way, we recently did a be kind rewind on Batman uh, forever. You should go check it out because whoo, Val Kilmer was amazing. This is something in that movie had to be <laughs> certainly wasn't the script. He and Jim Carrey got along great, right? Uh, yeah, I think they got along fine. It was Jim Carrey and and uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones that did not get along great. They had beef. Tommy Lee Jones was uh, a serious thespian. Yeah, he was not having it. He didn't look like a serious thes- thespian in that movie, though. No, he didn't. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get to some casting news. Um, Perry White has been cast in the new Superman movie. Wendell Pierce. Uh, known for his work as a detective on The Wire. I can't use his famous quote. Oh, yeah, because there's cursing in it. Well, it is cursing. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, um, uh, what's his, Perry White's th- no. famous quote? Great Caesar's <laughs> ghost! Because <laughs> that's a thing nobody says. Um we're bringing it back. We're bring- <laughs> Can we bring it back? You think if we just started saying that, maybe we could bring it back? I think so. Great Caesar's ghost. Who even said that? Where did that even come from? I have no idea. Is that a thing that people would have said? Great like, Caesar's you know, ghost. In, who was that? I don't know. I was just making it up. Oh, okay. To ring a bell. All right. It's like a <laughs> weird cross of Bugs Bunny and um, Pee Wee Herman. Inconceivable. Like that? Oh, okay. Yeah. That the, guy. Now you're the guy from The Princess Bride. Yeah. That's what that was attempting. It was yeah. horrible at it. But. Um, I think this casting's great. Uh, I like him. He was also in Suits. 
Yeah. yeah. Jack Ryan suits. He was awesome in both those. Yeah. 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 He's in the new Jack Ryan, the one with uh, Jim from The Office. Yeah. yeah. He's great in that too. Yeah. He's perfect. Perfect Perry White. Again, uh, this is one of those instances where the race switching, totally fine. Because uh, the importance of Perry White as a character has nothing to do with his culture, cultural background. Instead, it's his behavior, his his demeanor, and like there are some characters that it is about their cultural background. There's like it wouldn't work to obviously you know cast me as the Black Panther. No, no, that would be stupid. Um, so this is where it works. We also have said it a million times. We think it would work with Wolverine if you casted him as a Canadian Indigenous person, but whatever. Uh, we'll just we'll say it again. Or Danny DeVito. <laughs> Danny DeVito. He's too old. I've just decided he's just too old now. Maybe 20 years ago, we could have had a Danny DeVito Wolverine. Directed by Tim Burton. Um, <laughs> oh, man. He was already, well, whatever. Edward Scissorhands. This claws. was like the craziest <laughs> news I think I've ever heard. I had to look this up when I heard it because I thought, hey, you're pulling my chain. You oh. are absolutely yanking my chain. Liam Neeson is going to be in a reboot of the Naked Gun movie. Yeah, that's happening. That's a real thing. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm here for it. Liam and Liam. Yeah. Who's no, Liam? Lee, no, it wasn't no, Leslie Liam. Nielsen. Leslie. Leslie Nielsen. Yeah, Darn, the, yeah Leslie yeah, Nielsen. That. These were like dumb comedies. This is what I would call like the genre as dumb comedy. A lot of punny type stuff, slapsticky yeah. type things. Uh, think Airplane. Think, uh, what, uh, what else did the uh, Fairly Brothers... Top right. Secret. Yeah. Top Secret. Top Secret. Yeah. Yeah. Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm bringing man, back he Val. He just looks for any reason yeah. to bring up Val Kilmer. <laughs> um, Liam Neeson. Uh, I, did, does this seem weird? Or nope. do you think this works? It works. Well, I think Le- Leslie N- Nielsen, the, the, he was a very serious actor prior to that. And he, he did good with Slapstick. And I've seen Liam Neeson uh, make fun of some of his characters, and he does it well. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. He may be great at it. We'll see. Yeah, so one of the articles on X that I found when this news broke, um, they had a clip of him doing some comedic stuff, and I'm like, ooh. With how over-serious he is, yes. it will come across very slapsticky, yeah. and I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm interested. Uh, Liam Neeson can do whatever he wants, right? That dude's talented. Surely you're not serious. No, I am. And don't call me Shirley and come up with Windows updates while we're recording. <laughs> every time. <laughs> because that happens every single time. You're right. Um, so, yeah, look out for that. 2025. Uh, do we, should we talk about Sting? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Cody, tell us what happened. I mean, I don't, I don't watch <sighs> wrestling anymore. Um, I thought it was funny that the same night everybody was talking about Sting retiring, I watched the replay of the famous WCW uh, when they started to lose ground, when uh, Kevin Nash got poked by Hulk Hogan and fell over and gave we Hulk Hogan the title back. We don't talk about that. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. It was, it was worse than I remember. But then everyone else was talking about Sting, and so Sting had his last match. So the past three years, Sting has been wrestling on AEW, mm-hmm. WWE's big rival. Now, that, is that more extreme? Um, they, they do more extreme things? They tend to have more blood. That's a thing. Well, I saw AEW. a guy fall through, like, glass? Yep. And so they, I think, aren't as polished as WWE, and they also don't have the rights with the big companies that would prevent them from doing some of this more extreme stuff. Uh, But yes, so three years, Sting had said, that's my goal. I want to wrestle for three years. And he had 30 matches. He went undefeated and had a beautiful retirement match. And then the whole locker room comes out. Lex Luger's in the stands. A bunch of other former WCW uh, guys are there. And they're in uh, Greensboro, which is like WCW country. And um, It made me sad to see Lex Luger. Yes. He's in a wheelchair. Um, 
the son of uh, Crockett Promotions. He was there. Um, like, it was a big deal. And you had Tony Schiavone from... Tony du- Schiavone was there? Yes. Yeah. And he's yelling, it's Sting! It's Sting! <laughs> yeah, he's doing that. And JR's calling the match as well. Oh, all the emotions. And you get, like, people in the, the fans... Uh, they they all have their their faces painted. There's tears from oh, grown men, from I, little kids. I saw grown men, like fathers with their sons, just weeping with their faces painted, but weeping. 40 years of wrestling. Yeah. That's and wild, huh? You know what? I actually believe him when he says, I'm done. Where, like, we've seen it with Ric Flair. He's retired, like, 15 times. Yeah. We've seen it with Hulk Hogan. He's tried to walk away a few times, and now he's like, I want to have my farewell last match, but I can't feel my legs. Now, I'm curious. I'm curious. Now, you say with Sting, you believe him. Why? He's a man of faith. He is. I, I figured that was probably why. You know, you know what, like Tom Brady and all these other dudes who like can't, can't seem to walk away, they just have a real hard time. Uh, what they have in common is usually they don't have – a faith kind of background. Uh, and they, they say the same kind of things. Like Tom Brady did an interview after he retired the first team, the first time, and he was all like, well, I've done everything there is to do in football, and I just keep thinking that there must be something more. Mm-hmm. And I just, I got to go out and find it. He's like totally like lost. This dude literally is the best football player to ever play football. Yeah. And, you know, during his retirement, like, run, I guess, like, Sting's putting other up and coming uh, wrestlers over, even if they're on the losing end of his matches. Like, he's letting them get in, like, the serious moves on him, the icon, Sting. And he's all about, like, I'm, I'm, all about connecting with people, building relationships. If I do anything with wrestling, it's going to be behind the scenes. I want to promote a healthy culture yeah. for these up and coming guys. And all the comments that you've heard about Sting in his career, especially late WCW on, is just one of the best guys in the locker room. Yeah. And Kevin Nash did say that he's the only one that kind of had a negative critique, but he said the sting before he was saved was a different man. But once he found Jesus, like everything clicked and yeah. he's this guy and that's, that's awesome. who he really is. That's awesome. What a, what a, a testimony that is. That's great. Um, so from sting, the wrestler to a different kind of sting, I just threw in this story cause I thought it was hilarious. I mean, I shouldn't say it's hilarious. Uh, because there is a sting involved. But Michael Farchi uh, told Las Vegas news station KLAS that on December 26, he was staying at the Venetian in Las Vegas, fancy hotel, apparently. Mm-hmm. And he woke up to find a scorpion hanging on his underwear after waking up to a lot of pain. <laughs> he said he was sleeping when it suddenly, quote, felt like someone was stabbing me in my private area while he was in bed at the hotel on December 26, not the day after Christmas. Guys, he got stung in um, his uh, special pouch area, Um, his carrying pouch. We'll call it that. (laughs) By a scorpion in a hotel bed. He's suing the hotel. Cody, does he have? Does he have a case? Yeah. (laughs) No. I'm never going to Nevada. That's this is the moral of that story. Like what? Like, dude. I don't think I can ever sleep in a hotel again without like, I'm going to have to like take all the covers off the bed, make sure there's no scorpions in there. Cause now I'm just going to be thinking about this all the there's time. There's scorpions in Southeast Kansas. Dave. Dude, right. don't, there don't are. tell me that. Go to Big Hill Lake. You can find them all over. Yeah. I, I don't go to lakes, Matt. <laughs> That's why. No, one time I was staying at a campground here in central Kansas and a scorpion walked across the floor and I was like, I'm never getting out of this bed. <laughs> Never because I don't sleep places where scorpions are. See, and I don't worry about scorpions. I worry about bed bugs. That's why I check the bed at a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you see them? Yeah. I thought they were tiny. Um, they are tiny, but you can see them. You can see them. And if you've seen The Office, you know how to get them to all come together in a clump because Dwight does it 
when Jim's trying to get that girl out of his hotel room when they're in Tallahassee. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the CDC says um, the scorpions typically hide during the day and are active at night. That's and correct. Less than 10% of scorpion stings cause sy- systemic symptoms such as fever, body aches, or fatigue. And I don't even think any of that matters when you get stung in your special carrying pouch. <laughs> I, I just, come on. Like, does even even that matter? That dude's scarred for life. Now, you keep saying it that way. I work in healthcare. We use real words. Uh, yeah, yeah, but this is a medical f- terminology. I, I never medical know what I can get in trouble for. You know, like, okay, if I just say, you know, okay, just I'll just say it. T- he got stung in the testicles. Right. <laughs> Scrotum. I'm a child. I can't say it. And look at I he's, like, yeah. he's like, I was waiting. I am for, not a doctor. His see? face is red right now. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now, as someone in the mental health profession, yeah. I'm wondering why are you so antsy around that terminology? Oh, dude. Um, I don't so, know. So, yeah. Because now- I'm, I'm immature. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't hide that. I don't hide the fact that I'm immature. I love it. Um, yeah. So anyways, that was just a special story for, for us to talk about. And um, we got Dave to say testicle. Let's, we did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We won't, let's not say it anymore if I want to make it through this. Um, Taylor Swift, she's in the news. I mean, she's always in the news, but the genealogy company Ancestry has found that Taylor Swift um, is related to legendary American poet Emily Dickinson. That's awesome. Six cousins, three times removed. You know, I believe it. Yeah. Her songs are pure poetry, Dave. They speak. (laughs) They are. To my soul at various ages. Cody's a Swifty. Wait, I got something for you guys. Oh, you got your own news? Or or something about Taylor Swift? I'm related to Adam and Eve. Okay, that was that that was a biblical. (laughs) That was biblical stuff. You didn't see that coming. Uh, Cody, who's the most famous person you know you're related to? Um, Robert the Bruce. Nah, yeah. from Braveheart. First King of Scotland, you bet. He had a rough go early, but then he he redeemed himself. Yep, came on late. So. Um, I'm related to uh, the guy that came over, uh, like was in charge of the Mayflower. Wow, I, I have quite a few family members that are on the voyage immediately after the Mayflower, which is weird. Yeah. P- apparently a fourth of the world's related uh, direct descendants of Genghis Khan. I've also yes. heard that. Well, he so I don't know man. how impressive it is. <laughs> Very busy man. <laughs> so maybe we claim Genghis Khan. I was hoping Thomas Jefferson because of the Key and Peele skit, but yeah. I did not get Thomas Jefferson. Shannon, who are you related to? Shannon, are you related to anybody famous? Oh, please say President? Thomas Jefferson. Abraham Lincoln. Oh, nice. What? For real? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. I can't beat that. In your face. (laughs) This just became personal. All right. Okay. We talked about news for a long time. We got to get to uh, the next uh, little portion here. Everyone, uh, just relax. We'll be right back, and we're going to talk about our March Madness tournament uh, for this thing we're going to let you guys vote on and argue about. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. Cody, it's March. It's time for March Madness. I'm ready to be mad all over again. M- mad? You like <laughs> crazy mad or angry mad? Both. Okay. Um, so I was looking for something just a little bit off. The- we did comic book movies a couple years ago, and I don't think we can ever top that. Oh, I think we can. It's such a passionate thing. So I wanted to kind of have more, have more fun with it. And uh, just, you know... Like, let's just get a broad sense here. Where where do you stand with breakfast cereal? Are you a cereal guy? Um, as a youth of the eighties and nineties, mm-hmm. yes, of course, yes. Um, cereal definitely was a thing. Was a big thing in my life, and the commercials, Chef's Kiss. I just looking back at them. I just don't know why it makes me so angry when you say you're a kid of the night eighties. I just get so <laughs> mad. <laughs> It just bothers me so much. He was in the 80s for five minutes. You know why? I think it's because Gen X has everything else taken from us. It's yeah. never our time. Um, that's and they're trying to take it. You got to name it and claim it. <laughs> and I did it. What year were you born? 
89. Wow. Best eight months of my life yeah. until I met my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Yes. <laughs> Uh, what about you guys? You guys big into the cereal? I am big in the cereal. I grew up eating all types of cereal. My dad would get upset because he would make like a good breakfast. I mean, pancakes and eggs and all this stuff. And I'm like, can I just have the cereal? Yeah. And it would always hurt. And he was like, really? Like I just cooked all this. And I'm like, yeah, I just want cereal. Did you, did you ever come home? And like they eat afternoons after school yeah. and just find the biggest bowl yes. that you could find and and just pour it full of cereal milk and then park in front of the TV and watch like, you know, the afternoon cartoons. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just remember that so. And like when I played hooky, I mean, when I was sick from school <laughs> and I would because, you know, Shannon's a teacher. So I don't want to yep. I want to want to out myself or give a bad <laughs> example to the kids. Uh, but I can remember staying home sick from school and doing the same thing, just finding the giantest bowl. And cap and crunch. And taking the box with you. So then you didn't even have to get up. Yes. So, <laughs> so like I just keep pouring and then I'm like, oh and when I get down to the where there's hardly any milk, then I have to get up to go get more. But Okay. So now did you send off the like Oh yeah. The the, the, the box yeah. tops? Yeah. yeah, and the corners, the UPC symbols, whatever. You sign you send off for those all the time. I actually had, you know, you could do that with G.I. Joe figures and I got the Sergeant Slaughter special figure. <laughs> yeah, I had that, and then I don't know what happened oh, to my GI Joe. You but. might be sitting on a gold mine. Yeah, if you could find that, wow! No, I they're all they're all gone. They're all gone. I, I'm convinced my mother sold them all at a garage sale, the whole box for like fifty cents. Sounds like mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I when I think about breakfast cereal and sending off the box tops. Um, I think of the movie Better Off Dead Mm -hmm. because the little brother did that. And oh my goodness, he got so much stuff. Yeah, the joke the joke in the movie was is he'd end up with like lasers, like real yes. lasers, like really cool things. And uh, honestly, what you get here's a uh, rocket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was not uh, that cool. If we're if we're being honest, it was more like the uh, the a Christmas story where yeah, he sends off Amy. for the oval teen thing and it's all a decoder ring and it's a commercial. I got like a cocoa puffs spoon that had the bird on it. That was it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that, too. That was legit. Yeah. See, kids of the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Uh, I had the Toucan Sam Fruit Loops guy spoon, too. Those were special, man. When you had the spoon with the character on the end of it, no one used my spoon. That's right. It made that cereal much better. Oh, it did. It tasted a thousand percent better when you had the special spoon. Um, recently, just within the last couple of days, C- Kellogg CEO Gary Pilnick uh, said this. The cereal category is a great place for consumers under pressure. We're advertising about cereal for dinner. So he's like, he's encouraging people who may be down on their luck who don't have a lot of money and are, you know, struggling putting food on their table. It's like, hey, eat cereal for dinner. And if it helps out Kellogg's, you know, that's just a... It's a win-win for everyone. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And I've been like, listen here, Gary. I've been eating cereal for dinner for 48 years. I didn't need you to tell me. (laughs) And yeah, when I was was a struggling college-age kid, I lived on ramen and Rice Krispies. Not the not the regular Rice Krispies either, the generic ones. Right. Yes. So Kellogg's wasn't getting my money. <laughs> Great value is yes. getting my money. He's like, because, you know, those Rice Krispies, the generic ones, they don't taste the same. But when you dump three tablespoons of sugar on them, it doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah. Three <laughs> tablespoons. What? How many? Three, three cups. Uh, I was going to say. Yeah, three big spoons. You are. Ladles. Uh, I had some last night. I bought the um, the Christmas like, you know how they go half price, and they were red and green Rice Krispies. Oh. I was so excited. I was going to, like, make the little marshmallow things, but I never make anything. So they just, the boxes <laughs> have been sitting there since Christmas. And I had some last night, and I had the marshmallows, how you can just buy a whole bag of the Lucky Charm marshmallows. And I added those to them last night, and it was so good. Man, dude. that's a game changer. Yeah. Kids don't even know. Yeah. How good they have it now. They're so blessed. Mm-hmm. I literally saw that. You can buy oh, Lucky yeah. Charms marshmallows. I do. I have them delivered. Just the- <laughs> <laughs> Amazon. Side note, my son, who's now 13, once when he was like five, 
I go to the pantry and I find that the, the our bag of Lucky Charms are gone. It wasn't actually Lucky Charms. It was the generic. is Marshmallow Mateys, <laughs> which there are some uh, generic cereals you can buy and some you can't. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but this story is, as I went to go eat have some cereal, I'm like, where's the cereal? And like Ayla, my daughter, who's, I think if, let's see, Lawson was five. She was probably around 10 at the time. She's like, I don't know. And Lawson's, of course, like, I don't know. Oh, you know, so I've this long story short, I go around to the corner of our couch, which is in the corner of the living room. And I look back there and there is just a pile of all the other cereal without the marshmallows. He had dumped out the bag, picked out all the marshmallows, ate them. And there was just, just like dump of the leftover cereal. So it was like the, it was the mateys. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. All the marshmallows were gone. It was just the mateys uh, that were left. Anyways, That's awesome. yeah, my kids are, are cereal lovers too. But yeah, is, you got to be careful with the generic brands. There's some generics that taste great, that taste exactly the same. But like Cheerios, mm-mm. no. You go name brand on <laughs> you that. Not, you have to go name brand. Is there any other ones that jump I don't, out? I too? don't know because I pretty much do name brand on all the cereal. I take my cereal pretty yeah. serious. She's so. a, sner- a cereal <laughs> snob for yeah. sure. <laughs> Well, that's why, like, I'm glad Shannon's here because I think um, we can go ahead and knight her and and call her Sir Shannon, uh, geek of the round table, our a resident cereal geek. There we go. Because I've heard that, yeah, you take your cereal seriously. Yes. I feel shredded wheat. You have to go name brand because they don't get the frosted shredded wheat. Frosted. Yeah, I wouldn't eat that anyway. Because you need the correct amount of frosted. <laughs> To go with the shredded wheat, or it's really like eating grass. Yeah, why, why would I eat that then? <laughs> uh, there's plenty of good cereals. And sometimes if you get it soft enough, I can take my spoon and like cut it and just eat the frosting stuff on it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're devising ways. <laughs> the mateys behind. Okay, so like, uh, what's your, fa- if you had, if I didn't, you know, like hold you down until you picked your favorite cereal, what would it be? Oh. So. I'm going to say, but it's not by much, and you're going to hate me. Raisin Bran. You're a monster. (laughs) You're an absolute monster. Raisin Bran? But the Captain Crunch with berries? Ooh. That's a game changer. Captain Crunch is great. And but the problem is, is when you eat a whole box of Cap'n Crunch in one sitting, it just your mouth is like a it's like a you're like a, a victim of war. It hurts. <laughs> There's <laughs> it's like the the battle of Bayon just took place inside your mouth. You and know? I was never Scar a Captain tissue. Crunch fan. I don't know. You didn't. You didn't so I, it wasn't one of my favorites. No. Okay. So what's your favorite? Mine would be Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Okay. I think that's a lot of people's yeah. favorites. Um, and I like the Lucky Charms, but I can seriously go through a whole box because I eat all the marshmallows and then fill it up again. And I'm, see, I'm actually, like, I eat it the other way around. I eat all the nasty stuff first and leave the marshmallows, so it's just a big bowl <laughs> I of like marshmallows the and milk. I like the so. Odie cereal. I like the stuff that goes along with the marshmallows. In fact, I, I try to leave the uh, – I see, I don't do that. I try to leave the ratio about the same. Well, and that's why I got to buy marshmallow, the big bag of them, because you just keep adding them in there, <laughs> and it's amazing. <laughs> Matt, what's your favorite cereal? Cocoa Pebbles. Cocoa Pebbles? You let them set in the milk, and the milk just turns to chocolate milk. Okay, but I think Cocoa Krispies is better, if we're being honest. No. No, no, no. no. There's a texture thing there. <laughs> I know. I don't really like the pebbles. I don't like Fruity Pebbles. I don't like Cocoa Pebbles. But this, look, look, this is important stuff. And the this texture is- of the rice is better in Cocoa Pebbles to me. To me. Yeah. This is this is exactly the kind of conversation I was hoping we'd have, though, because this leads into what the listeners are going to vote on. This year's March Madness tournament is a serial edition. So an independent entity has seeded these all out. I didn't have nothing to do with this. So if your favorite cereal isn't on here, don't message me and yell at me and tell me why is this cereal seeded number four and this one's an eight. This one's clearly better. Don't come at me. I didn't do it. We're just I, I had someone else seed it. And so, uh, we're okay, I'm intrigued by this because if one is left off, we might have. He's already complaining. He has no idea. Oh, I haven't even wow. listed we out any of them. We might have fisticuffs. 
Because, like, it was a huge serial in my childhood. I just haven't had it as an adult. CW Post? He's, he's, no. <laughs> he's such a product of today's society. Look, he's already planning on being offended. I'm offended. You don't even know <laughs> I, if the serial's on there or not. Actually, I do, because I have the list. It's oh, there. Oh, okay. It's Fear there. not. Okay. I'll so, tell you what it was when we get to it. So, basically, we're going to put a few matchups per day on in the community group. Okay, it's in the community group. You got to join the community group. That's that's different. So if you follow the Pop Culture Pastor page, that's fine. I'll put a I'll put a thing on there that'll direct you guys to the community group. Because if you want to vote, you got to be in the community group. And there's only about a hundred people in there right now. So if you want to vote, you got to go there. Um, and that's where we're going to put it and where this is going to play out. So you guys want to run through the bracket real quick? We can just yeah. do this real quick. I don't. They don't have the brackets based off in any kind of grouping. Uh, in the first quadrant of the bracket, you have one seed cinnamon toast crunch versus grape nuts. Eight eight seed grape nuts. Yuck. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna go like go grape nuts flakes with a lot of sugar, <laughs> grape nuts flakes with sugar, that's actually pretty good, pretty solid. Um, four or five matchup honeycombs and cocoa pebbles. That's a battle. That's a battle right there. I dig some honeycombs, but you're also risking some mouth injury with the honeycombs. Yeah. Um, just you guys speak up if you if any of these if you th- think anything. Three six matchup: Golden Grams, the three seed versus Honey Bunches of Oats. If I go off the commercials, it should be flipped. You think Honey Bunches of Oats should have the higher seed than Golden yeah. Grams? I'm I not a agree huge with you. I think they're going to upset. Yeah, gonna be an upset. It's I'm, happening. I'm not a huge fan of either one, so I won't. Be, <laughs> I'm I won't not either. Be. But if you add the strawberries for the Honey Bunches of Oats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that the one that we get that has yeah. the strawberries? Yeah. yeah. It has strawberries in the box. Dried, dried strawberries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh the two seven matchup, two seed lucky charms versus shredded wheat. This isn't frosted shredded wheat. Now this next bracket is where I have a problem. The one seed Reese's puffs. Really? Um Again, if Whoa. you go off the commercial, what about the commercial? I don't understand. What do you keep saying that for? What do you mean if I go off the commercial? Um, Reese's Puffs might be the best cereal ever based oh, off the commercial. Sure, Reese's Puffs are the best cereal if like you know fifteen other cereals haven't been invented. <laughs> also, Captain Crunch Peanut Butter Crunch is clearly the best peanut butter cereal ever made. It is. Uh, Thank I'm you. With Thank you. you. Okay, I'm going to throw one out that I just bought recently, and it's Cheerios. Peanut butter and chocolate. That oh. is that just sounds terrible. Oh, it's great. Is it now, really? Cheerios used to make just plain peanut butter Cheerios, and those like you could eat it dry. Oh, it's great. You see, I I, th- I thought che- I think Cheerios are best when they're just the normal version because Honey Nut Cheerios are an abomination. Oh no, those are the best. <laughs> Gonna be great. Yeah. We're gonna have loads it's of fun talking seriously about Seriously, my second it was a toss up between the cocoa pebbles and the cap and crunch peanut butter in my yeah world. So I love I love cap and crunch peanut butter crunch. My grandma, when she knew I was coming over, would always give me a box or two of cap and crunch peanut butter crunch. And that you find a big bowl, and that was the same thing. You let the, you let it marinate in the milk for a while, and then it's like peanut butter milk. It was awesome. Uh, so yeah, Reese's Puff versus Cheerios, the one eight seed Cheerios. That's shocking Cheerio slander. There's, an eight seed? I think that's well, going to be your upset, your eight seed upset right there. No. No. I think a one seed's going down in the first I round. I think if yep. you get nope. millennials and younger, it's going to be Reese's Puffs. Uh, the four or five matchup, four seed Cocoa Puffs versus five count chocolate. It's a cocoa battle. Uh, it is a cocoa battle, and I think that I would have flipped or moved count chocolate to the eight seed and moved Cheerios to the five. That feel, feels more right. Yeah. Tricks and Wheaties, the three six matchup. Wheaties are vastly overrated. They just make they make a lot of hay, hay on the old sports thing. With a little sugar, it's good. Um, I'm sure. Well, yeah. I mean, most flaky things are good with sugar. You need some little, sugar. Little bit or a lot bit. A little. You don't yeah. need a lot with Wheaties. I mean, I would eat cornflakes with sugar. Those are actually pretty good. Uh, the two seed Fruity Pebbles will go up against Booberry. The seven seed. I'm rooting for Boo Berry. I am too. I feel like no. those. So the Boo Berries, the Count Chocula's, the Frankenberries. Those were all, those were big in the '80s. I feel like a lot of people maybe haven't had those. Um, it's sitting in my cabinet right now because they recently came back in a, kind of a big way. But for a long time, they're kind of an afterthought. In yeah, fact, they I think, disappeared. For I think a while. maybe they stopped making Boo Berry and Frankenberry for a I long agree. time, like they should have. 
Oh, <laughs> whoa. Wow. Okay. Other side of the bracket, one seed Fruit Loops versus Raisin Bran eight seed. That's a that's a right seed. Eight seed, Cody. And it will be the first no. eight over one upset. No, because you're the only person that likes Raisin Bran. No. Yeah. Like well, him and ninety year olds. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I, as much sugar as I like, I do like Raisin Bran. Oh it's yeah. It's got to be the on the name, name brand. brand. And it's got to have the sugar. Oh. And I don't eat raisins any other time. That's the only time I'll eat it is in raisin bran. Yeah, you know what? Raisins are terrible food. Doctors that love heart healthy things promote raisin bran. It's because they get paid. It is. Because <laughs> <laughs> Kellogg's pays them. Um, how about this? The four or five seed Cocoa Krispies uh, versus Frosted Mini Wheats. There you uh, go. I think there Cocoa, we go. That's Cocoa Krispies in a walk. In if I'm thinking about no, it. that's going to be frosted. Number three. Here seed. we go. This is the one Ooh. that I was. This one like it has to be in it. Number three, Honey Smacks. Yes, Honey Six Smacks. Honey Nut Cheerios. Like I want to go buy a box of Honey Smacks now because I don't remember how great they really were. Now, yeah, kids from the refresh 90s my memory. Say that. Are the Honey Smacks are those the same as the Super Golden Crisp? Are those similar? Remember the super golden crisp with oh, the bear? Yeah. It makes your urine smell really bad. That's true. Yeah. That is a tr- Like, I'm, I'm shocked we brought that up. But also, <laughs> that is a truth, a human truth right there. That and asparagus. Why is it so, why is it so pleasing, though? <laughs> Here is your image for you. Yeah. Okay. Honey Smacks are the same as super golden crisp. Yes. Just two different makers. But and that's have, a vastly underrated cereal. I'm all for that. They have a frog. Yeah. And okay. that frog made some great commercials as well. Uh, the two seed corn pops uh, versus life cereal seven. I feel like both these cereals are over uh, uh, underrated. Oh, life they're cereal. vastly overrated. What? Vastly. I love life cereal. Dude, corn pops are good in life cereals. Like they always had the Mikey loves. He likes it. Life like cereal. life cereal. Yeah. Now you don't eat them and right after you pour it in the milk. You let the milk do its work on the life cereal. And I, I had life cereal and I'm like, why? Why does he like this? It, it's a bringer of life. That's it, like the whole point of it the name. It wasn't. You can taste those little sugar crystals on them. Oh, man. Yeah. Life cereal's great. I just think you didn't have a good experience with it. Yeah. I like to let life cereal get to the point it was almost like oatmeal at that point. Yes. It's really like the soggier, the better. It's uh, There's something about it that's just really pleasing. Really pleasing. Uh, then the last little quadrant of the bracket here, one seed Captain Crunch versus eight seed Corn Flakes. Captain Crunch is just amazing. Uh, four seed Cookie Crisp versus five seed Rice Krispies. Cookie um, Crisp is one of my favorites as well. Cookie Crisp is great. Yeah, I feel like Cookie Crisp is another one of those older ones that... Yes. You know, a lot of people maybe don't know about these days. Cookie, a cookie crisp. Remember the dog? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. was. Now, if you are a fan of community, they had an episode where uh, they tried to convince Chevy Chase's character that he was the cookie crisp magician from way back in the day. And not, but then, like, Troy's like, when I was a kid, he was a, a dog that stole cookies. He, there was no magician. And so, <laughs> yes, watch that episode. You're welcome. Uh, the three seed Frosted Flakes with the six seed Kicks. Kicks would tear your mouth up. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you something about Kicks. Somehow it fooled our parents into thinking that Kicks was somehow healthier because it wasn't as sweet. Kicks rocked. <laughs> the way, hey, did you get that? Kicks rocks? <laughs> yeah. Kick rocks. Kicks rocked. I liked Kicks. I secretly liked it, but I would complain about it just to make my mom think that, like, oh, man, kicks, really? Yeah. <laughs> Side note, Frosted Flakes, Tony the Tiger, and the singer and the singer of what song are the same person? Wait, Tony the Tiger and the singer of what? Uh, of a certain of song. A, of a famous song. I don't know. Tell He's me. a mean one. Mr. Oh, Burl Ives. Yeah. No, no, one burl no, lives. No, uh, thorough, th- uh, thorough, thorough good or something like that. Yeah, yeah. The the Rose guy that sang the the Grinch. Oh, I thought song. that was Burl Ives. No, that's the guy from Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, the Snowman. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. I get I get my Christmas. 
icons confused sometimes. And finally, the two seed Apple Jacks versus the seventh. I can't even read that. What is that? Waffle Crisp? Okay, so crisp. I will tell you, I think Apple Jacks has um, like a strong chance of making it to the final four. So good. Apple Jacks are, are very good. Now, you disagree? I would disagree. Okay. Yeah, they're not one of my favorites. But I don't know if I've had that waffle crisp either. So I think that's just another version of honeycombs. Oh, uh, well, then I'd sort of. probably have to go for Apple Jackson. Well, let's ask the kid from the 90s. Was it a 90s thing? Waffle crisp? I think so. <laughs> that's not an 80s thing. Um, it was definitely both an 80s and 90s thing. I don't you think he's just making that. He's just saying stuff. Now I got to look. <laughs> he's just saying stuff now. He's just saying stuff. All right. No, but seriously, Cody, have you ever heard of was- wa- Waffle Crisp? I've had Waffle Crisp. Oh. So I've never heard of they, it. Uh, it had like maple syrup in it. Or Ooh, it had okay. flavoring of oh, maple wow. syrup. So it was so like, it was like waffle. waffle. It was actually, so it's not, a, yes. it's not a honeycombs thing. No, it was like a little waffle. I'm intrigued. Now I want a bowl of Waffle Crisp. I know. Crisp. That's, I, I want to try a bowl now. I've never had it. I've had every single one of these other ones. I feel like I've been jobbed. Like I, I got I got robbed out of life. Something life giving. I mean it's waffle crisp, but you know, I just avoided it because it looked like honeycombs. And if I was gonna get honeycombs, I'd just get honeycombs. Okay, I fibbed. Yeah, you were wrong. No, you wanted so, it so badly to be an eighties <laughs> thing. No, I definitely now remember. It was like 96 cuz I was watching the Chicago Bulls win their second three peat. Yeah. What does that have to do with waffle crisp? I was eating waffle crisp. Oh. It was in the house. <laughs> okay. You have a memory tied to like the food you Yes. Had. I got gotcha. you. All right. Okay. So this is going to be on the community group. There'll be a link up. I'll I'll put the link up for the community group on the Pop Culture Pastor page. Just go to Pop Culture Pastor on Facebook. Search for the link to join the community group that's on Facebook, and then you will be able to take part in the voting for each of these matchups. We're going to do this all month. Now I kind of question if I if Apple Jacks will survive Waffle Crisp, but if it does, it's making <laughs> it to the final four. <laughs> it's like it's a big battle. If they can make it past this early test, it's they like, might have the, the juice. It's like KU in the round of 32. Usually there's some <laughs> Cinderella sweetheart, and you're like... Oh, KU, you got to make it through. If you do, you're, do going, get, you're getting to the Final Four. But if you don't, goodbye. Yeah. Every and once in a while, you get Northern Iowa. Yes. I'm, 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 I just read this. Now I'm disappointed. Wasp, Waffle Crisp was discontinued in August of 2018. I oh. can't even try it. Yeah. So it was only 22 out. years of existence. Yeah. So no Waffle Crisp. Oh, come on. You know that it's for sale somewhere out there. On eBay, oh. they sell Jolt Cola from like the you know late nineties on eBay. I'm sure it tastes amazing at this point. I mean, it's pretty much probably fermented into wine. <laughs> you get it'll keep you up all night and knock you out. I don't know how that works, but doesn't sound healthy. Ugh. All right, so uh, be looking at for that on the community group. Hey, we're going to Planet Comic Con today. When this drops, we'll be at Planet Comic Con. Come visit us in Kansas City. Yeah, come check us out. Um, Come come visit us. Go to go to the con. Uh, hang out with eighty thousand of your closest friends. Buy some cool new Funkos you didn't know existed, and come visit us because we have lots of free swag. And um, we just like to talk. We do. We like to visit with people at the Comic Con. All right, Matt, Shannon, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, uh, we'll have to we'll have to have you back sometime and talk about you know. Some other pop culture, not, but you're our serial expert. Serial expert. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Yeah.